Um, my first question is for you, Mr. Brooks. What are the implications for the Bitcoin network if fewer players control an increasing amount of the mining activity? Well, uh, thank you, Congresswoman, for that question. One of the uh, distinctions between the Bitcoin blockchain and proof-of-stake networks is it matters less in the proof-of-work con context the number of miners that exist because it's not as though the miners can simply collude and choose to alter the Bitcoin blockchain the way that you could on a proof-of-stake blockchain. In a proof-of-work system, you're receiving Bitcoin rewards um, randomly, right? Because there's a lottery going on, and I think this is one of the most confusing and perhaps most misunderstood aspects of Bitcoin. What goes on is not that there is a correct answer about validating all of the transactions on the blockchain and some miner is figuring out the correct answer. What happens is there's a puzzle that has no correlation at all to the underlying transactions, and whoever gets the right answer first is part of a lottery ticket winner who gets that reward. That's how it's different. So I can't collude with Riot and Marathon and the other biggest miners and decide to alter the, the blockchain. I could do that, however, on a proof-of-stake network, just like I could in, a, in corporate America. I could, I could be a corporate raider and round up a majority of the shares and take over the company and oppress the minority shareholders. That's why proof-of-work, one of the reasons why proof-of-work is a good thing, because it prevents that. Yeah. yeah. So, pro Professor Jules, your work in the field of computer science helped underpin the proof-of-work blockchains that we see today. But you are a proponent of alternative methods such as proof-of-stake. Uh, and one of the major criticisms often levied at proof-of-stake networks is around the issue of consolidation. Uh, so, Professor Jules, is there consensus in academia or in industry around the viability of proof-of-stake as an alternative to proof-of-work-based mining? And if not... Why, why not? <laughs> Excellent question. I mean, the question of trust in stakeholders and the degree of centralization in a blockchain isn't mainly a function whether proof of work or proof of stake is used. Um, it's uh, a question of the dynamics of the network. Centralization is a systemic problem. It's affecting essentially all blockchains today. And it's something that the industry is working to reduce. The claim that proof of work somehow provides protection against centralization sim simply isn't correct. And the claim that proof of stake miners can somehow manipulate the system more effectively than proof of work relies, as I mentioned earlier, on a theoretical consideration that really hasn't proven to be of importance in, in practice. Uh, there are concerns about the rich getting richer in proof of stake systems, but this too is a systemic problem. A uh, study recently by faculty at MIT in the London School of Economics showed, for instance, that 0.01% of the wallets in Bitcoin control 27% of the Bitcoin. And so mm -hmm. Bitcoin isn't an egalitarian system. Bitcoin is not the worst bit blockchain in this respect. Uh, Bitcoin is a wonderful technology, um, and it, uh, you know, I have a, the, the greatest respect for its creators and for that that community. Uh, but there are systemic problems that have nothing to do with whether proof of work or proof of stake is used. Proof of stake is a viable technology. As I mentioned, it has proven its viability in securing hundreds of billions of dollars of value in a very adversarial environment, by which I mean that if somebody can hack proof of stake or could have hacked proof of stake, that person or entity could have made a lot of money. But that hasn't happened. And that's testimony to the robustness of proof of stake. Proof of work is equally robust, but unfortunately consumes an enormous amount of electricity. So a common criticism of proof of stake, which Mr. Brooks has already made, is that it's less secure primarily due to some of these consolidation issues. So Professor Jules, do proof of stake networks pose cons uh, security concerns if their mining industries become more consolidated? Uh, any blockchain that becomes centralized, whether it's pr proof of work or proof of stake system, poses a th threat to the security of the system in that the miners can in, can in principle take over the system. Today, the Bitcoin blockchain can in principle be controlled by a set of four entities. They're known as mining pools. If they collaborate, they can in principle spend the same coins twice or cause the network to simply stop processing transactions. So the idea that proof of stake protects against this problem is, is simply not true. And in fact, there have been proof of 
work, uh, sorry, that proof of work protects against this problem is simply not true. There have been proof of work systems. Ethereum Classic is one example, Bitcoin Gold, a Bitcoin spinoff is another, that have been successfully attacked by people who rented hash power and took over the network by mm. devoting more resources to the network than um, the other miners there. So again, proof of work does not provide definitive or inherent protection against centralization. And we've seen that in practice. Uh, proof of stake, as I said, does raise some concerns about the rich getting richer, but that's not really a function of the use of proof of stake. Uh, there are scientific papers suggesting that is really a question of how the system is calibrated or parameterized. 